it's time for a fashion brand tier list. And this is the biggest tier list I have ever done. We've got nearly a hundred brands here and we're gonna rank all of them. Now, it's been a long time since I've done a tier list. Uh, I have a feeling this one's gonna be very different from the last one I did a year or two ago. And we're gonna be basing this entirely off the most recent menswear runway shows or lookbooks or whatever this brand has. And with nearly a hundred brands, this is gonna take a while. This is gonna be my magnum opus, at least by length. It's gonna be multiple parts. We're gonna go deep in depth on every single one of these brands, and I'll show you where each of them stand. So with that, I think it's time to dive in. Let's start ranking. All right, here we are. We have a few ranks, of course, S, then some letter grades, A, B, C, and then we start getting into the darkness. I've added two more rows. We've got the Marshalls clearance row. We're like literally the only time you'd buy it is if it's $7 on a clearance rack at an outlet of some kind. And then even below that, we've got the Forbidden Dungeon where brands go never to be touched, never to be looked at. They do not deserve anything. They go into the dungeon. And we've got almost 100 brands here. This is going to be insane. I guess, I, I don't know. I guess we get right into it. Uh, I guess first I should say this is just the brands that, you know, are on my radar that are worth talking about and also brands that are active doing runway shows, doing like larger collections. So there's a lot of stuff I'm not going to cover here. A hundred is enough though. A hundred is just enough. I couldn't go any further. Anyway, first up is Amiri. So how we're going to do this we're not just going to, I'm not just going to talk about how much I like or dislike a brand and then rank it. We're going to go look at the most recent uh, runway show, lookbook, whatever it is that they've done. And we're going to rank it based on that. So let's check out what Amiri has been up to. All right. looks like the most recent is spring 2023. I already don't like what I'm seeing. <laughs> oh, Amiri. I have trouble with Amiri, um, they do looks that are just horrific like this. I hate the neck here. I hate like the double breastedness, but not. I hate this waistline. Basically, whenever Amiri puts together full looks, I hate them. But the thing is when I see them individually, a lot of the time I like them. Like maybe if I saw just this jacket or just these pants with a different look, I like it, so I, I don't know, it's tough. Let's just skim through some other ones of these. Ugh. The leisure wear that they do is also terrible. So this collection early on, they're leaning into a lot of my least favorite elements of the brand. This bag and this color scheme, they're kind of going into like Virgil at Louis Vuitton territory. What the, what the hell is this? Oh my god, it's like an all-over logo mania type thing. Again, feels very Virgil. But then they sometimes get into this. Like, the knits they do are really nice. When they get into separates like this, this is much more appealing to me, I have to say. Yeah, like this. It's just all so matchy-matchy in a really, really disappointing way. Like, this does not need to both be this motif like they should switch it up when they make it a two-piece it just feels cheaper to me all of a sudden okay it's something i like the like super super wear super fade on these jeans that's something kind of cool the paisleys don't really do anything for me there are a lot of brands doing that right now this long coat over like a loungewear thing is kind of cool Ooh. Oh no, I'm gonna, I'm feeling nauseous all of a sudden. That's offensive. That's truly offensive. Um, the shirt's nice and easy. The shorts are okay. I don't like this jacket, whatever is going on here. This look is like a, a six out of 10 for me, I guess. Oh man. This tailoring is okay. The fit on the pants is kind of whack, especially how it's like tucked in to the tongue of the shoes right there. I don't really love that. I don't know. I guess we've seen enough here. And I have to say, I'm liking this even less 
than I have past Amiri stuff. Like, yeah, this tailoring's not it. The fit just doesn't do it for me. I, I like that he's trying to do something interesting, but it's trying to do something too interesting that he just can't pull off. I feel like I've seen Fear of God do this before. It's nothing new. Yeah, I think we're done here. All right, here we go. Amiri. Uh, where do they go? Let's see. We're somewhere in between here. I think... Oh, man. They just barely make it off the clearance rack. By that much. They're so close. Oh, God. Because here's the thing. We're also setting the standard here. We're setting the grading curve right now with this first one. Is Amiri really a C based on what I just saw? Um, no, they're not. I have to stick to it. I can't go. I can't let myself go off past stuff I've seen. I have to go off the most recent collection. And based on what we just saw, no, they go on the Marshall's clearance rack. It is what it is. Okay, next up, we have got Casablanca. This is going to be an interesting one. Uh, we're going full Jeff Bezos here. I don't know if you've seen that picture. It's really great. I, I think he was like going to a disco party. It wasn't, people kind of misunderstood that picture, but it is cringe either way. Let's see what happens here. All right, here we are. Once again, we have a spring 2023 menswear collection. <laughs> also already not liking what I'm seeing, but it's kind of interesting, I guess, even if it's not for me. And I do have to give that some credit. Um, there are cool details here. Like I'm trying to get this tie off at the tank top is interesting, even if I find it quite ugly. This detailing at the pockets, very like Western detailing. I do appreciate um, the metal tip kind of Western boots down here. Just get a better look at these. Yeah, I like that. Listen, this ain't bad. Again, it's not for me, but it ain't bad. Let's stick to men's stuff here. That is bad. That's Ronald McDonald at the rodeo. We're going to ignore that one. Oh, my. Oh, man. And this is like <sighs> themed diner uniform type outfit. It started off much more interesting. They're, they've definitely got a motif going here, I have to say. Not a lot of menswear either. Again, that looks like it's made quite well. Um, the pants are interesting, super, super high waist, lots of fringe. I don't know. Who is it for? That's my question. This is kind of going in Alessandro Michele Gucci type of direction, um, which is a bit cooler, but a little bit too cutesy, a little bit twee, a little bit um, overly committed to how referential it is. Like, take inspiration, but don't just do that inspiration, if that makes sense. Uh, let's just quit. We can't spend too long on each of these. I got to pick it up. That's a travesty. I want to look at this belt, though. That's been done a lot. It looks nice, but it's been done a lot. Just a plain tank top underneath it. The pants are nothing to write home about. This pattern that they're working with here is horrendous. Oh, man. I had high hopes for this. That's something interesting, that neckline there. Uh, yeah, I can get down with that. This shirt, too. I like the colors. I like whatever design's going on. That looks better. The belt's cool. I don't mind this look. It's not for me. But I don't mind it. I've got to stop saying it's not for me. You already know it's not for me. Um, I hate the pants pattern, but the shirt's pretty cool. The belt's interesting. Is that another one of the New Balance collabs that they've been doing? Maybe. It is interesting. I don't hate it. I don't hate it. Okay, we're having some, we're having some life breathed back in here. Um, this is like a quilting store type of fabric look, the pattern at least. Um, another kind of Gucci-ish sheer shirt underneath. I like the rounded collar. I don't hate it. I don't like the pattern, but I don't hate the actual cuts of things. We need to see more to make a determination. I hate that shirt. I can't stand that. A little ruffle down at the bottom, kind of preppy. 
Mew Mew men's skirt vibes. Okay. I like some of the ideas that we're playing with here. At least I understand it and I can get down with it. Big drug rug type of thing. That feels a little weird. I like the cropped cut with the flare. That's something fairly unique, I would say. And that just ain't it. All right, I think we've hit the end of the road here. I think we've seen enough. All right, Casablanca right here. Where does it land? Um, it was also not great. I didn't like it, I have to say. But there were redeeming qualities. It was unique. It's stuff that you don't really see many other designers doing. There were flavors of other brands in there. Uh, Gucci, Bode, Bode, Bode. I don't even know how you pronounce it with the like crocheting, stuff like that. Um, I don't think it was as rough as Amiri, even if I don't personally like it. That's a solid C, in my opinion. There were redeeming qualities that I appreciated to some degree or another. And there was a lot of stuff that I prefer to forget as well. All right, next up, Jacques Mou. Jacques Mou. Let's do it. Let's do it, Simon Jacques Mou. Is his name Simon? Simon? I don't know. All right, I actually don't know how Jacques Mou do their shows. Do they do men's and women's separately? They got ready to wear, but then the last men's wear is 2021. Are they doing co-ed shows? Let's just check real quick. They are. Okay, so the most recent we've got, fall 2022. Let's see what's up. Okay, the first menswear look is look six. Let's zoom. Let's zoom. Maybe not that much. Okay, um, there's stuff I like and there's stuff I don't like. This, like, veil train off of the sleeve is nothing. It ab does absolutely nothing for me. It just feels really stupid and cheap and cliched. I don't know. This necklace, um, is that a necklace or is it like something tying off? I think it's a necklace. I don't totally get it, I have to say. Now that I zoom in, I thought this was a blazer, but it's more like a cardigan in blazer fabric. And the cut of it is not very encouraging to me. Uh, the pants, again, that fit is very odd. And then the shoes, these like super duper mock shoes. I don't know. I don't know about any of this. I'm not like immediately nauseated. Although maybe I am looking at this. Oh, geez. These shapes just ain't it. Um, the bag's interesting. Not something that, that I would be into, I don't think. But it's kind of cool, like a pillow blanket tied up. I, I, I can get what's going on there. Just this super billowy stomach makes all the men look pregnant in a weird way. The tie offs, I guess would give it even more of like a balloony shape. Pants look fairly comfortable. I would say that stitch off at the middle, it looks like maybe like a ripstop kind of fabric. And then those same shoes that I just can't get a vibe on at all. Okay. We've got a harness, a woven harness, with a cardigan sweater vest, and then a men's dress over pants. It's like, ooh, I'm real gender bendy. Look at me. Look at me. It's very forward thinking, but it's like, no. Comme des Garçons was doing this who knows how long ago. Man, I was expecting to like this more, honestly. I'm not like a crazy Jacques Mou fan, but... That's just lazy. Oh, we're going to tie a, a bow. It's a baguette. <laughs> I don't know. What you, I'm just saying French. It's a, it's, a, it's a baguette tie right there. Oh, my accent. Rough. The same shoes on each one. Shoes aren't everyone's game, but I'd like to see more variety. Um, the pants are like baggy for bagginess's sake. Although I do kind of like where they sit on the stomach. But then... The flow of them feels weird. This we're just not going to talk about. It's similar to the train here. The women's wear seems nicer than the men's. Yeah, the men's just seems really tossed off. Like these floral things hanging off. It's just like, what can we do to make this more interesting? 
but there isn't anything interesting. It's not even like that clean looking. It looks kind of tortured. Like, look at this. Doesn't that look tortured? This like a linen weave with a backpack harness thing. It just ain't it. I think I've seen enough. I'm just going to really quickly boop, 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 boop. Not even a lot of men. See, it just feels like an after afterthought. That's horrendous. Although the actual tank top is pretty cool. The absurdly low cut. I don't hate that. Um, eh. Yeah, I'm done. All right, back on the chart. Jacques Mou. That was really bad. It was really, really bad. Um, just the fact, even the fact that you were getting a men's look, like every three women's looks, shows the amount of thought that's being put into this. Uh, I was expecting this to do better, but it's also going on clearance. It's not so offensive that it's in the dungeon, but it's like actually really close. I thought long and hard about it, but yeah, clearance rack. That's where it's staying. All right, next up, Rude. Last time I did a tier list or talked about my favorite brands kind of thing, Rude did very well. So let's see how they're doing now in 2022. And Rude doesn't have uh, runway shows on Vogue. Do they not do runway shows? Um, collections, Spring Summer 23. Perfect. That's got to be the most recent one. So they do runway shows, but they don't put them on Vogue. Uh, and also the layout of this isn't great. It's probably going to be kind of blocked for you. So I'll try talking about whichever one is in this space right here. Um, but we can't do that for this first one. So leather jacket, deep v-neck, tucked in, super low rise, elasticated jeans with cargo pockets. Um, I like the vibe. It feels a little, a little posery to me, like they're referencing some things that don't feel super authentic to the brand, but all in all, I don't hate it. Moving over to this one. Can we zoom in here? No, that sucks. Uh, okay. Zip up hoodie. I don't like the, the cut of that hoodie, but we've got a leather vest, zip up leather vest. And then these pants are horrific. They're a crime as are these sandals. The cut of these is nasty. Everything in this look, actually, I don't really like. The leather vest, I guess, is okay, but nothing special about it. And here's the thing, much like Amiri with Rude, once they start getting into loungewear, it really falls off for me. Um, the pants could be cool, but I can't really tell what's going on there. How do I scroll through this for F's sake? Whoa. Okay. Poor, bad, how do you even say this? Ill-fitted varsity jacket in red. Um, button shirt underneath that I can't tell what's going on very much with. And then super light wash jeans. The jeans look good. Everything else, not so much. Jeez. Okay. This guy, more loungewear, a lot of nothing. This looks more like what I'd expect out of Casablanca. I can't tell what's going on with the shoes, like some tassel loafers, fairly benign to me. Super boring jacket, sportswear inspired. Oof, this is all very rough and impossible to navigate. The knits are good. Um, they've always been very good with knits. I really like the color blocking of this cardigan. I like how the black goes all the way around. I like the fit of it. I don't know if it's how he's walking or what. It looks like it has a bit of asymmetry, but even if it's not asymmetrical, just off the shoulder like that is nice. Um, kind of like a paisley sheer shirt that does nothing for me. Shoes are interesting, like snake skin. I vibe. I hate this entire aesthetic. The The fit of the pants doesn't do much for me either. The way that you've got those seams showing. This is a crime, but this is like really playing to like the hip hop 
uh, musician, celebrity, NBA player type crowd. I would say this is like walkout fit type of thing. So it's not for me. And I understand that here we're getting into some real like Tom Brown territory, which I vibe with. It just doesn't feel very unique. And now we're in like JW Anderson territory. I'm just not getting like a clear and then like Ferrari F1 racer world. I'm just not getting a clear aesthetic from any of this. Look at look at these three looks next to each other. Do they all look like they came from the same designer? I would say no. There's obviously common elements, but I'm just not seeing it. This is sick. This jacket's incredible. But where does it fit with anything else? Man, I'm disappointed. All right, I've I've seen enough. All right, Rude, I've always rated them very, very highly in the past. Um, it was better than Jacques Moore and Miri. I know that much, but it was not any better, I don't think, than Casablanca. Maybe slightly better. Do we do this? Are we doing that? Like, in order? We'll do our best. So, yeah, Rude is like a solidly middle of the C class, I would say. And now moving on, a brand that I'm not familiar with at all, aside from I know it is a minimalist aesthetic, and I know that it's incredibly expensive. We now need to look at the row. All right, spring 2023. Let's do it. What do we got? Looks like we've got like a more of a lookbook type thing rather than a runway show, if I had to guess. Oh, no, it's, it's still either an outdoor runway or a look. No, that's a, that's a lookbook. All right, is this going to do anything for me? This is very much serving, like, I don't know, English teacher, um, band teacher, <laughs> adjunct professor, heavy adjunct professor vibes going on here. Uh, tailoring. Clean, clean, very modern fit. Ooh. Okay. Okay, Olsen twins. Okay. That coat is fire. Wow. I was not expecting to be blown out like that, okay? I can't tell what's going on with the rest of it. I'm guessing fairly plain and understated, but that jacket is something else. All right, back into the uh, professor vibes. Not of the nutty variety, not the nutty professor. Uh, cable knit sweater, I'm sure very, very high-end cashmere, alpaca, whatever, whatever wool. Um, very standard belt, Mar Marshall's level belt. Uh, the pants, the fit is fantastic. That super hard taper down to the legs and where they end, like the tailoring on that is impeccable, I have to say. Well, let's look at the jewelry. Yeah, I can't tell anything. That was short-lived, okay. They're all kind of like overexposed, the photos too. A little bit of like motion blur going on. Like this, I can't tell if it's the fit. I think it's a lot of wind. The cut of the pants still looking good, but I can't tell much beyond that. Other than the fact that it's relaxed fit, like the, the shoulders go down very, very far there. I'm sure quite intentionally. Now we're getting a more casual look. Some jeans, a shirt half like a french tuck on that of sorts extra long hmm this is hard to make much of anything of ribbed sweater it's just stuff that's known for being incredibly simple but incredibly high end that's all you can really say about it so i'm not getting i'm not being blown away but i'm not seeing anything that i hate either that's just kind of the nature of the brand but i know they have their their diehards. And I can understand why. Like, anybody wearing these clothes is likely going to feel quite good in them. That's super overlong. All right, I think we're just about at the end. Some more knits, a lot of trousies. Okay, all right, we got to make a determination. This is going to be a tough one. All right, the row, the row. This has been the best one so far. Um, maybe on that leather jacket alone but also the fit of the trousers I was a big fan of. Uh, everything looked very well made, very thoughtfully done. They fit everything to their models very, very well. 
it's just not, other than the, the leather coat, it's not doing anything that is putting them over the top of anything else. So it's a solid B for me, very solid B. Um, if there were a few more chances taken, if they put themselves out there a little bit more, they could improve upon that for sure, but I don't think that's like what they're looking to do either. Okay, here we go. Next up, Dries Van Noten, somebody who I also have not kept up with at all. What's Dries up to? Okay, okay, okay. What do we got? 23 menswear, spring. Let's do it. Uh, Dries Van Noten is also somebody, I feel like if I spent more time with him, I would be able to understand where he's coming from, what his aesthetic is. But because I haven't spent too much time on it, I've never quite put my finger on it. So let's see if we can do that right now. Um, very interesting here. Is this one piece or is it a piece over? It's a piece over a piece. If this was one piece, if it was this kind of um, skirt that turned into these trousers together, that's kind of cool, but just a piece on top of a piece, it doesn't do a whole lot for me. And beyond that, there's not a whole lot to this look. Although, oh, that's just some stripes on the tie. Yeah, not a whole lot going on here. Hyper tailored. Very, very considerately fit. Very fitted at the stomach. A four button here. So very formal, I would say. And then a bulge on the trousers. I don't think it's incredibly um, flattering to wear. It doesn't look that way to me, but I do appreciate that there's a point of view going on here. Looks like this is going to be a kind of common theme throughout the collection, but a very similar look just with a longer coat. And I do like it more with the longer coat, I have to say. Interesting stuff, This these like peach salmon knits combined with the hyper tailored super thick pinstripe trousers is a very interesting combination. And now it's all starting to come back to me that one of the things that he is best known for is mixing um, colors, patterns, things like that, that wouldn't normally go together. And you're really starting to see that here. We've got some sweatpants with a zip knit down at the ankles. We've got that going on again, but then this super formal kind of coat I don't know if it's totally working for me. The fit of this isn't great, and I don't like those shoes with that pattern and color. This is more interesting. Once you make these short shorts, you add that like wallet chain to it. Um, this is getting into, and like the tattoos too, the choice of model is also important. Uh, I like this look quite a bit. No, I'm good on that. This feels like it's being done by a lot of other brands right now. The cargoes too. Anything that where it starts getting into like sportswear, like racing territory, is not a good look to me. I like the top though. The top half of this is nice. Man, I want to like it. I want to like it a lot more than I do. I hate that. Also, like fishing, like sport fishing looks are not for me. Okay. In isolation, some of these pieces would be good. Those coats are nice. The shorts are nice. Uh, the kind of like cowboy boots are nice. But the mixing and matching is too much for me. And that makes me start to think that maybe Dries Van Noten just isn't for me because that's such an important part of what he's doing. I like this. I like this shirt, like cowl turtleneck goes off to like a handkerchief sleeve here. This look is one of my favorites so far. Deep V, I like this as well. This is a much more cohesive look too. Really like that, that sweater, long sleeve, whatever it is. All right, there's redeeming elements, but as a whole, it just doesn't work. But I think it's not necessarily meant to work either. Yeah. Okay, Dries, where do you end up? Oh man. Um, that is in, it's like a C plus B minus. So I'm not sure where to put it. I think I disliked more than I liked. So I'm gonna fall into C plus, although it's right on the edge 
of getting into a B, but you can tell from my reactions, there's a big difference between how I felt about the row and how I felt about Dries just then, so I think that justifies the difference. And the next design we're looking at is Greg Lauren. Greg Loren, however it is. I think he is related to Ralph Loren. All right, Greggy, what do we got? All right, I wasn't sure if Greg Lauren would have any um, shows up on Vogue, but he has like all of them up. Spring 2023 menswear, off we go. All right, I'm very curious how this is gonna turn out. Greg Lauren is someone who, every time I've seen his pieces in a shop or whatever, I've always been very intrigued. I've liked them, but I have never dove into his full aesthetic. Like when he puts on a show, what does it look like? Let's find out. Look one, you're immediately getting his famous patchwork pieces here. I really like the color. I really like the cut. I like the choice of jacket. I even like the staging of the photo. These super long zips up on the, the jeans here. I like everything about this. Great start, great start. All right, leaning into the Western vibes. These like chaps, are they leather? No, I think they're kind of like a canvas. Sorry about cops going by. Yup, yup, yup. This, this is just like a more simple version of that last look. Instead of like a full on trucker jacket and patchwork, it's like a more of a kimono jacket with less patching going on. This one right here going into a denim look, a lot of intentional distressing here. More Western boots going on, very hyper worn. I like the stacking going on. I like how it tapers into a stack. I think that's a really good look. Um, again, the styling is on point. The jacket doesn't do a lot for me. I'll just leave that aside. This is starting to look more commercial now. Some cargo jeans here. Looks like a hoodie underneath, like a distressed hoodie, but you, you just don't get a lot from it. The blacks are crushed in this photo to the point where you can't see anything, which is unfortunate. And now we're getting like some interesting tailoring going on here, like this herringbone type deal in a buttonless blazer kimono with herringbone dress cargo sweatpants. I really like the choice. It's like a single very simple choice. Instead of making this out of a more typical casual fabric, let's make it out of like a dressy formal herringbone wool. And I think it works pretty well. It makes it look more casual even to a point, almost like loungewear, but with that formal element. I think that's very, very smart. Um, you got some of his trademark like Patrick Army jeans under the chaps there. Uh, more kimono jackets, but this time in a denim. I really like the playing of the Americana with his signature elements here. This vest doesn't do a lot for me, but I like the jacket underneath. has just got a splash of denim. I like the pants as well. I like the cut of those. I like all the pockets. I love this long coat here in the patchwork. Okay, brings in some like reclaimed pieces. I don't like how it looks, but I appreciate the process, I have to say. And we've got even more of that here. Now in the jacket, I appreciate that he kept them separate. If it made it a two piece, it would not work nearly as well. That's a beautiful sweater. That's actually really incredible. Wow. I don't even, yeah, that's really cool. Really, really cool. All denim with the side stripe is a bit too much for me. But now this like matador kind of look kind of cropped or like tucked in with those zips up the, the pants and the way these kind of come in with a curve into these fangs at the front. Love that. Love that. Really nice jacket. I like the brown with the denim, some strong shoulders. And these undershirts are really nice as well. And I've liked the shoes throughout as well, I have to say. If we get in on those, they look really good as well. All right, I think we're at the end here. I think we've seen enough. I like it. All right, Greg Lauren really did a great job there. I really like that. Um, I think that's worthy of an A. From look to look, a clear step above the row. So now we've done a few, we're kind of understanding where the grading curve is laying out. Um, and I think it's really starting to solidify now. And Greg Lauren, I liked probably 80% of what I saw there. And quite a bit of it, I really liked. 
well worthy of an A. Good job, Greg. All right, next up. Oh, man. Okay, here we go. I wonder what's going to happen here. Rick Owens. Rick Owens. But here's the thing. I haven't looked at the most recent runway show, so maybe it's terrible. Let's find out. All right, Ricky boy, what do you got for me? Spring 2023 menswear. Off we go. All right, we got our boy Tyrone right up front. That man is cut. The man's is cut, okay? Jeez. Um, that's hilarious. It's not even a shirt at this point. It's just a scrap of fabric. I love how these tanks are getting like smaller and smaller every season with Rick. These pants are sick. That fabric. I would love to understand what that is. That's gorgeous. And um, the bracelets, crazy chunky. Pretty cool as well. All right. Fair start. Fair start. Showing a lot of skin. Um, looks like he's really playing with this see-through motif here. A lot of really nice geometrical detailing. And I like how he's choosing some spots to be extra sheer and other spots to be more solid. I do appreciate that. And some like super formal cargo trousers. Ooh. Really doing some weirdo stuff with the shoulders there. I don't even fully understand what it is, if it's a separate piece or is it part of this shirt, the tank going on here, but I'm down with it. And it looks like a very similar trouser to that. First look going on there. And I believe these are some kiss boots, just poking out the bottom there. Um, this is my first look. It hasn't been my favorite. I don't really like the fabrication of these bottoms. And it looks a bit stiff up top. Not the best. But this, even though it's quite similar, works great. Super, super creepy, super exaggerated. Again, I love this shoulder detailing with these kind of triangles that are getting thrown in there. And crazy oversized pants in this like crepe fabric. Yeah, very, very cool. Man, really bringing in this motif here. And I don't know what it is about it that's speaking to me, but with the mandarin collar and everything, I really do like it. These almost look like the uh, tablecloth that you'd see at like a 10 year old's birthday party, but turned into these oversized pants. Interesting, interesting. The way he just creates this creepy exaggeration is so, so perfect. Ooh, ooh, that jacket is nice. The structure of it, I love. The, the trousers have been very samey, I have to say. Oh my God, Rick, what are you doing to me? Very cool. I wonder how he does that. I've got to try one of those on one day. Got to find one in store. Ooh, very cool. New like Geth runners going on there. Laceless, it looks like. We got some shorts coming in. I really like these shorts. I love this toga going on here. I love this short sleeve jacket with the long body. Very, very cool. This is fairly plain, I would say. Kind of playing off the last one. Oh. Button up, button up. This is looking quite dark shadow here, I would say. Ooh, this is not dark shadow. This is full on Rick Owens. Super deep V, leather jacket, or leather vest rather. Very interesting kind of apron detailing going on there. Whoa, 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 whoa. Let's break this down. Okay, crazy long stacked up leather kiss boots, first of all. Really cool skirt here, like denim or like a canvas, something like that. And then whatever the hell this is, looks like it just came out of the swamps. Yeah, very, very cool, Rick. Very cool. This is gorgeous. Classic Rick going on here. And then back to some of the more structural sheer stuff. Okay, so this is what Rick does. He just does his own thing. He plays with his own motifs, 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 and just refines, refines, refines over and over and over. And that's why we love him. He does it incredibly well. So I think I've got the vibe on this collection now, and I think I can make my determination. That was all fairly unnecessary because Rick's S tier. Unquestionably, he's a legend. Um, I love everything he does, even when a specific piece or look doesn't do it for me. I really appreciate what he's going for, and I think he's always pushing himself forward and pushing fashion forward. It is an unquestionable S for Rick Owens. 
All right, next up, Dior, Christian Dior. Um, yeah, I've always had like kind of a love hate, a like hate relationship with Dior. Again, have not kept up recently, so let's see what's going on. All right, Dior Men, Spring 2023 seems to be the standard of what collections are out there at this point. I'm so like disconnected from so many brands now. I, I don't hate what I see. Um, my issue with Dior in the past has been that they're just a bit too sterile, a bit too perfect, too clean. Um, that's kind of still an issue here. I don't love the the palette of this. The, it's like a peachy khaki, but clearly the tailoring is incredibly nice. Um, their footwear also tends to be a little bit too proud of itself sometimes, and this is like no exception. Like I'm sure it's really nice artisan atelier hand embroidery on these on these clogs or whatever they are. Nice little sleeve detail right there. So what is this blazer with an extra lapel that comes down? Very cool, very innovative. I think the hood and harness are completely unnecessary though. So stuff I like, stuff I don't. Okay, um, cool look. The shorts, the fit just isn't quite right for where fashion is at right now. Um, the completely open look, not my favorite again. The coat's nice in a classic Dior color, but nothing to write home about. The necklace looks a bit cheap to me. And the shoes I, I can't stand. So this one, not the worst look, but it's not great either. Um, this is interesting. It looks kind of like they're trying to do a, one of their bags, but the asymmetry, it's nice. I don't love it, but I don't hate it. Uh, all the accessories here, that little bag is pretty cool the like bangles on the arms or whatever they are is a bit too much still don't like this footwear interesting uh the tailoring is really where it shines all these little details the little like belt strap coming down it's all quite cool i'm just gonna ignore the footwear from now on even that little detailing at the cuff of the pants is nice uh that's a little bit lazy to me but I could see like a, a Timothy Chalamet wearing that. And I think I'm already starting to understand it. And here's my issue with Dior. I think we're going to be done soon because this is all really, it's what I expect out of Dior, but it's pretty much never anything more than I expect out of Dior. It's you get what you get at all times and rarely is it anything beyond that. So Dior, um, that's like as solid as a B gets. I think I even liked it more than the row. Yeah, I think so. Super solid, super clean, but it's just too clean for me to think about attaching myself to that brand, to be spending that kind of money on that brand. It just needs to do more, take more risks. All right, next. Very, oh, okay, this is, this is cool. Charles Jeffrey Loverboy. Um, very like punk, ska, queer inspired brand let's see what lover boy's been up to all right spring 23 looks like kind of a lookbook situation going on here let's see what's up the first look very tailoring heavy very like sailor john paul gautier gautier someone that i used to know um something interesting going on these pinstripes here okay i don't know I don't know. It's a little bit too childish for me, I think. Just women's wear version. We'll skip those. Okay. This I don't I don't totally dislike. It's it's a little bit like halfway between Tom Brown and Loewe or something, but very nautical, kind of losing some of the the punk edge from the earlier Loverboy stuff. This is starting to bring it back though. That's pretty cool the cutout detailing yeah i like that i also like the fit of the pants very tight up top flare out and widen towards the bottom i'm down interesting a lot a lot of women's stuff oh that's horrendous what is happening no 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 uh let's back away slowly 
Oh, wait, I'm missing some of the gender bendy stuff. Uh, it feels like fairly fashion school to me. That's very cool, though. The way that the pattern creates shape. What is the, the fabric? A kind of like knit? That's cool. Um, I don't like the look, but I like the idea. Oh my god, it's like... <laughs> it's like graphic design is my passion level stuff, if you know what I mean. No, no. All right, I think I'm done. All right, I was out of there pretty quick because that really disappointed me. That really disappointed me. I didn't see anything I liked there. So at our current point in time... Ooh, it's like right in there in the Marshall's clearance section. That, that section is starting to fill out with some brands I didn't expect. Okay. Marine Sayre. This is going to be exciting. Let's see what's up. All right, Spring 23 menswear. Let's see what's up. More like Speedo wear going on from that cover image. That's really what they decided to open it up, huh? Yeah, duh, that, that does nothing for me except the shoes. The sneakers are pretty cool. I don't know if I've seen sneakers from Marine Sayre before, but I, I like those. Okay, very athletic. Um, kind of like Balenciaga vibes on this one, which is not something I'm used to saying about Marine Sayre. Lots and lots of women's wear. We've got some of the like crescent moon pattern going on in this denim. Very nice coat, but nothing to like write home about, I would say. I really like the square toe on these. Yeah, the sneaker's my favorite thing so far. What else we got? Very denim heavy, very like sheer cutout, lace heavy. Like the, the construction is incredible, but the actual looks themselves aren't making me go crazy. Nope, nope. I think maybe she's, she's just on uh, an aesthetic right now, going for a vibe that is not my vibe. Yeah, it's too, it's too loungy, too sporty. Um, I'm very disappointed right now. Maureen there's another one that I really have historically liked, but she just seems to be like in a world right now that I'm not down with. I'm quite disappointed here. I'm just waiting to see, here we go. I'm waiting to see if it gets more interesting. And this is much more interesting. Um, I like this. Very boxy, floor-length coat. Differently, uh, like, monochrome green. Uh, different types of pockets all over. Very cool. Very interesting. Was it, like, blowing my mind? No, but at least it's different. Here's, I kind of like this shirt. The SpongeBob shirt's cool. This jacket, I think is probably one of the regenerated jackets she makes out of, like, reclaimed pieces and things like that. I don't like it in this version as much. I liked it when it was just the jacket, you know what I mean? Yeah, well made, but just not, like, putting itself over the edge, and that's my issue with it. Um, I just want to get to the, towards the end here, like, robes and stuff. All right, we're done. Yeah, I'm, I'm done. All right, this season was almost like getting into Versace territory, which is not my favorite territory to be in and not where I would have liked to see Marine Sayre. Uh, but the construction was cool. There were some cool ideas. It's like this collection was right along with Casablanca towards the bottom of the C tier. Yeah. Next up, Lava. Lava. What have they been up to? I, Lanvin is super hit or miss for me. Let's see what's up. So Lanvin is sometimes super interesting and cool and innovative, but sometimes just boring as hell. Uh, is 2023 ready to wear a co-ed show? Let's just scroll through right quick. It doesn't appear to be. Oh. Yeah, there's some men. Okay, I guess that's the most recent. I don't even know what the first men's look is. I think right here okay what's a going on here it's a really nice coat i like the like mint buttons there i'm sure that stuff underneath it looks like silk or something is super comfortable 
but not like a crazy interesting start. And we've got like a golden rope fishnet type of thing going on. I'm sure that bag is like an it bag of some kind, but it doesn't do a lot for me. That, just this type of pattern in this type of fabrication is really rough for me. Just not what I'm into. Oh, they've got like detail shots down below on this one. It's just very plain. I want the innovation, you know what I mean? Where are the new ideas? This is kind of what they do well, these cropped pieces, jackets, things like that. So this is like a button down looking, I'm guessing that's a thicker type of material, like jacket material, given a button down look. I like the drop shoulders. Um, it wouldn't be a look that I would wear. Ooh, I also like the raw details on the pants. Yeah, there's stuff that's saving it here in that particular look. I like this motif that they're playing with, the double button down. It's very interesting to me. It's just very like easy, breezy. Uh, okay, now we're starting to get interesting. This is the kind of stuff I like to see out of L'Avant, kind of pushing it forward. Um, it looks like a very interesting type of fabrication. I like the sheer like polo underneath. And the pants are okay, kind of like a modern fit. This coat, I'm sure constructed in a very interesting way, but that's about all there is to it. That did not do much for me. I hate the fit of that. Now we're pairing the tailoring with the denim and a raw fringe at the bottom. These coats, yeah, they're just like on one this season that is not the one that I would want them to be on. That was a long sentence. Beautiful embroidery, I'm sure. Very interesting, high-end techniques, but not being used in a way that um, excites me. Yeah, I think, I think that's the end of it. And it's all women's wear. Okay. Wow, an incredibly lackluster showing from Lanvin. Incredibly lackluster. Is it worthy of going in the clearance bin? Oh, boy. That was worse than Casablanca. I think it's at the very top of the clearance bin. Maybe even below Amiri. Man, we're, we're tough graders today. Okay. Can Balma do any better? Balma Paris. Let's see. Balma is, is another one for me that's incredibly hit or miss. I have no idea what to expect. Uh, Spring 23 menswear. Let's see what's going on. Uh, this is a co-ed show. So, where are the men? I think this looks like the first menswear piece to me, if at all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. This is a crime against humanity. We are moving on very quickly and swiftly. Please and thank you. What are they going for here? The clogs? I hate this uh, color palette that they're in right now and the fabrication. I hate everything about it, actually. So hopefully we move on quickly. Um, I like when they play more with the darker colors. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. We're trying to be Balenciaga here with these shoes, eh? What in the hell? Hey, at least they're going for something. Um, they're also going for something with the rest of this look, but that something ain't nothing good. Um, like, it's that's interesting. This look is actually very interesting, but it's just like too much, which is a common problem with Balma. It's just always too much or often too much. It's too much. You're doing too much. Stop doing so much. Why? Why? I just hate all of these patterns that he's using right now. Olivier Rousting, is that his name? The blazer is kind of cool, but it's just like over tortured. This is like almost a Rick Owens type of thing that you could see him doing, but the cut is just a little bit overwrought, in my opinion. Okay, now we're getting somewhere. It's feeling very Rick Owens all of a sudden, right? This like membrane tank top type of top, all of these various hems, sweatpants with these long kind of drawstring belt things coming down. 
This is a good look. I like this one. Hmm. That's like a Beyonce type look, that last one. Still in Rick Owens territory, I see. The, the footwear is almost starting to look like kiss boots here as well. Um, I love this top. I re actually, I really love this look. I love that. Yeah, I vibe. I vibe. Whoa, what was that? Pimp vibes. Heavy pimp vibes. Too heavy, some would say. Um, that's a really cool sweater. Again, quite Rick Owens. That's the thing. I like it, but I only like it because it feels like somebody else. This feels like Bomb Mob in a bad way. Okay. Have we seen enough? Have we gotten there? Uh, this is like the, the, I don't know, the streetwear hype beast kind of look here. I like it. I had to like skew my head. You know how sometimes you, your instant reaction is like, I hate this, but then you go, or do I? I don't hate it. This is cool. Whoa. I really like it. That that was that was a really cool one. That was a thinker song, I think. Uh, all right, I think we're we're about at the end. I think we get it. I'm sure this took like eight thousand hours to create or something crazy like that. Oh, how do we judge this one? All right, Bama. What do we do about this? Oh boy. There were enough pieces in that that put it at the bottom of the B tier for me. But like some were so bad that it's straight up forbidden. Okay. But there were some that were worthy of an A tier. So does that mean it evens out into an upper C or a lower B? I think it's an upper C. It's not quite on the level of these. No, it really isn't when I think about it. Those looks, you need to be more consistent than that. And that's the consistent ball mount problem is inconsistency. Next up, Pierre Moss. I have not kept up with Pierre Moss at all. A common theme in this video, apparently. So I'm excited to see what Kirby Jean Raymond, Gene Raymond, has been up to. Apparently, he hasn't been up to much because he hasn't done anything since fall 2021 Couture a show that I really didn't like. Uh, let's, let's do some Googling. All right, is there anything, like, do we have a collection here? Uh, see you in the new world. Runway? No, the most recent is really Couture. What? Is the, are they, they're still doing Reebok by Pierre Moss. I guess we'll look at that. Um, or we won't. We get three images. This is gonna be super simple. Yeah, I didn't realize. We're, we're done here. Pierre Moss has disappeared. And they go in the dungeon because they're not doing anything. I had no idea, they were so hyped. They got a couture show. Um, I'm hoping that he's doing well and just figuring out his moves and planning for something really big and really cool. I'd love to see that, but um, yeah, new rule for, for this tier list. I guess if, if you don't create anything recently, you go in the dungeon. The end. Them's the rules. All right, and finally, what does this even say? Boris Bijan Saberi. Oh, this is going to be interesting. Most recent on Vogue is spring 2019, which I know he's done stuff more recently. So back to Google. All right, uh, collections. Autumn Winter 20? I know that's not true. Um, where's 11 by Boris B. John Sabiri? I think this is just what we'll have to settle for. I didn't realize that the, the main line hasn't been done. Okay, we've got Spring Summer 22 here. That's recent enough for me. It's, is it just shoes? Is it is it just shoes? Hello? So Autumn Winter 21 have anything other than shoes? No, I must be on the on the shoe pay. Yo, what is going on? Lookbook. Well, last lookbook's from Autumn Winter 18. I know they're still making stuff. Yo, I'm so lost right now. Alright, I know Boris is still making stuff. It's still being stocked on Essence. So we've got to go ask, but this is unfair because now 
we're just looking at looks in uh, pieces in isolation. We're not getting looks as they were intended by the brand. It's just Essence doing like a lookbook type of thing. So my thing with Boris Bijan Saberi has always been like, well, it looks like Rick Owens, but it's even more expensive than Rick Owens. Like, what is the selling point here that makes me want to spend a thousand dollars on your cotton shorts? Why would I do that? That's the question that always needs to be answered here. Um, it looks very nice. It creates some very good kind of like goth core looks. I love these shoes and these boots. They're really incredible. Uh, I really like a lot of this stuff, but I just have not yet found the reason for it to exist. Interesting. So yet another one ends with a, I don't know, a fizzle rather than a bang. I think I can see they're still making stuff, uh, but not putting out shows, not that active. So I think it's not quite in the dungeon, but it's also not much higher. You get It gets to the bottom of the clearance rack, but if they activate more and show me more looks and show me more of what their actual brand identity is, either for the main line or for the 11 diffusion line, it could shoot up because I do really like a lot of those pieces. Like if I was getting real looks and getting a real vibe for them, I could see an easy upper B tier, but for now they're in the clearance rack. All right, that's all I can do for this episode. And we only got through like 15 of them. Like I said, this is going to be a multi-part journey here. I hope you stick around, subscribe to the channel, check out the other video on screen here, and I'll see you next time.